Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and of course, University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Hurricanes have made it three in a row now with a big win over Georgia Tech. And now it's our favorite week of the year. It is Florida State Week, which we'll get to in a moment. But, Coach, congratulations on a wild win against Georgia Tech. It was um, made a little harder than we needed to, um, but sometimes you got to find a way when uh, you're not playing your best and some things go against you. And obviously, for a team that hadn't fumbled in six games or five games, to put it on the ground three times in one quarter is, uh, is quite a feat. Got to credit Georgia Tech for the way that they went after it. Um, and that gave them life in a game that we were, you know, really in control of. And, and then once you're in that situation, you got to find a way to manage it and see it through. Uh, which I'm proud of our guys for doing. I mean, it's rare to win a football game when you turn it over that many times. And then, of course, you have some come back for points. Yeah. Well, they outscored us 16-0 to zero in points off turnovers. So we basically shipped them 16 points. Now, again, they earned that. That's not, you know, right. and, with, and, and we, we allowed that by not having great ball security. So it's not random completely. But, uh, yeah, you spotted someone 16. And that's going to make it very, very difficult. Then it made the task difficult. If you include a couple of fourth down stops, um, those were almost like turnovers. And, yeah, it, it, it was a difficult day um, by some of our mistakes and some of what they did. By the way, I don't know what it is about Georgia Tech, but I think we finally did maybe exercise some demons with them. You know, they've given the University of Miami trouble. Uh, 2004 or 5, Miami's playing for a chance to go to the Orange Bowl game. And some guy, Calvin Johnson, might have heard of him, makes a couple of ridiculous catches. Uh, 2008, Miami had a chance to move on to the ACC championship maybe, and some guy named Dwyer ran for about a million yards, and uh, a couple of years ago they got a fake punt, and, and then this thing was trending the wrong way, but you guys showed a lot of mental toughness. Well, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Look, we, we had two really big energy expenders. You know, NC State at home was a huge game for us. At Pitt, you know, with, what you, with everything going on there. Everyone knows what the next game is, you know, which it's now FSU week. And here you go, for, uh, Georgia Tech at home, early kick. We felt it was really important for us to start fast, um, to, to bring the energy. And we did. You know, you're up 14-0. to zero. And, then, and then we give up an explosive play on defense. Uh, then here come the turnovers. And now, now you're in a ball game, you know. So we, we allowed them into it. And then once we allowed them into it, we had to go 60 minutes to fight them um, to the death. Coach Rambo, seven catches, 210 yards, his fourth game, over 100 yards. And with a month left to go, he looks like he's just really hitting his stride. I think he is. Um, I think the comfort in our offense, you know, obviously he and Tyler have got a, a great connection. And, um, and he gives us something different. He, he can run by coverages, and he's doing it every week. Um, sometimes just man-to-man -man running behind a guy. Sometimes, you know, Coach Lashley's got some really good setups, you know, where he can get behind a coverage like on a flea flicker for the big play. And he's getting down there and he's making the play. So um, he, I, I've said this before, but he is, as, is a big time year for wideouts in our conference, and he, he takes a back seat to nobody. Okay, let's get to Tyler Van Dyke. It's three weeks in a row. The numbers are off the charts 10 touchdowns, one interception, over 1,000 yards, completing 72% of his passes. He's up to 310 yards per game. That's uh, number 16 in the country. Scoring offense is up to number 32. Uh, obviously, he's handling it pretty well and going forward, uh, your expectations. And also, we've always said, if you're the quarterback at the University of Miami, it's a big responsibility. It is, and Tyler just, he, he approaches every game the same way, and he approaches every drive the same way. Um, and we have to remember what we talked about a week ago, Georgia Tech is not a, un, a normal defense. I mean, they've got a lot of three safety looks, you know, sort of odd Robert, dime packages, different things that they throw at you. and. Um, and Tyler just handles it, he manages. But what I was most proud of is that for the first time, it felt like in a few weeks, we, we, we started to stub our toe on offense. Not for Tyler per se, but we, you know, we started not having the success that we had. And now it really takes that steady hand to say, okay, hey guys, let's, you know, we're confident in who we are, we're confident in what we're doing, let's go back out there. And if you think about the first drive of the, of the third quarter, go right back out there, get a touchdown, and, and, and that really, was a big turning point, and we had to do some other things like that the rest of the way. Manny Jalen Knighton, over 160 yards. The, the thing that impressed me on 32 carries, I believe he only had four negative yards. And that, that's a feat in its own right. Forget the total number. Unfortunately, he had to fumble that led to points. But overall, a, a very good day for the Rooster. Yeah, I mean, he keeps showing he's got great acceleration through the hole. I think that's the thing that stands out. 
Um, he's learning to get more patient. When he's really patient, when he receives the ball and allows the blocks to form our offensive line, like you say, if only negative four um, negative uh, rush, rushing yards, it means we're going forward a lot. We're not get, we're gonna have to dodge guys in the backfield, which means we're getting the front blocked. Um, and he's able to see the holes, and once he sees them, that acceleration uh, is what's carrying him through on the second level. And then he's he's doing a great job of breaking tackles on the next level. He doesn't run out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we don't. We're not a big into running out of bounds here, Miami. We we want We want to fight for every extra yard, and and, uh, and he's done a great job with that. Your defense, coach, uh, in the fourth quarter, I think it's the last four games. You're averaging about. Uh, you're allowing five points a game in the fourth quarter. Uh, your defense is making the big plays at the moment of truth. I don't care what sport you're in, football, basketball, baseball. There's going to come a time where it's the moment of truth. Bases loaded in baseball, can you get a double play? Can you make the shot in basketball? Football, can you get the stop? At the moment of truth, your team's making some plays. Yeah, and in, in the five league games we've played, the last two drives of the game, we've, we've only given up six points uh, on two field goals. So um, we are finishing games strong. I think it's a credit to David Feely and our conditioning, you know, that we can play hard for 60 minutes all the way to the end. Um, we had to play great on Saturday because we were in a tight game, and I think we gave up five yards of offense in the fourth quarter, six yards of offense in the fourth quarter. Um, and, we, and we had to be great because obviously it was a one score game and anything could have changed. So um, really proud of the way that we played. We're still, we're still hunting for that consistent performance. We, we, we still gift away, in my mind, too many points on some simple stuff. Uh, but that's, that's, we have to live with that, we have to own that. That's our inconsistency. We have to coach through that, we have to play through that. Um, but I know when I watch, I mean, we were, 43% three and outs, 45% three and outs um, on Saturday. I mean, I mean, those 33% is like a gold standard. 25% is excellent. Um, to three and out somebody over 40% of the time, I mean, that's dominating. So we, the players see enough to see the dominating side that's in it. We just have to know that, that those other things that are getting in our way are, are preventing us. And we, if we, we keep closing in and keep cornering in on the things that are, that are getting in our way from being truly dominant, um, we, we know the defense that we can be is, is out there in, in November. I mean, you have a, almost a romper room <laughs> with your safeties. You've got James Williams and Avante came in. I want you to comment about his interception. And then Cam Kitchens was your leading tackler on the day. Those, those young guys act like they've been here for 20 years. It feels that way, but it, it is, um, it's an adventure. It, it, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> I think maybe the greatest thing they do is they make it look like it's easy, but it's not easy. And um, it's a hard position with what people are doing now with motions and adjustments and tempo and formations or whatever. Uh, forget about the playing because when the ball snap, you know, they do a lot of good things, not everything perfect, but when the ball snap, they are playing well. Um, it's the game before the ball snapped. That's as hard as anything. And for them to be able to manage their assignments, um, to be in the right spot and to, you know, keep the defense functioning. I mean, that, that's, that's really where it's at. And, and T Rob's done a great job of, of getting those guys ready to play and, and then obviously you get to see a play like what Avante made in the game, and that's, that's pretty special. Outside of, outside of that, Coach, are sometimes I think in sports the greatest players are the guys that transcend everything. And I'm saying it's too early for that for Avante and James. But nonetheless, I think together they play two and a half games. They have three interceptions. That's a, that's a pretty good start. And the, the interception by Avante was, I don't know, a cross between being an acrobat and a ballerina. That's it was right. incredible. Yeah. They can make a play, right? And we've seen Cam. Cam can make a play, yeah. and um, that's what we were a little bit lacking this year on defense. I mean, obviously our turnover numbers are, are not what we're used to here at Miami, and, and so sometimes you need some guys that can make a play. But 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 defense is about two things: your ability to make a play, but you're also a defense to be solid and, and hard to beat. And, and I am proud of the plays that they make. I'm also proud of, of the stuff that's not noticed, where they're just making the routine plays where they're supposed to be, and and um, and they're only going to get better and better from there. One thing that comes on defense, also a sudden change, Coach, and you were faced with that quite a bit last week, but talk about the mindset on the sideline. You know, if you get a takeaway and then it's a giveaway, what do you talk to your defense about, about staying focused and having to come back onto the field when you think you're going over there for oxygen and water? Yeah, you, it, it disrupts the normal sequence of when you normally take a field. So we want to bring everyone together. Don't take the field one guy at a time. Let's talk about the situation. Where's the ball on the field? Um, a lot of teams like to take a shot right there, maybe get a trick play right. out of a sudden change. You remind them of that. But you also, the last thing you remember, hey, we get to go play defense right now. How cool is that? Like, we love to play defense. It's what we do, right? So, sure, could have punted or whatever, but we get to play right now. So where, where we're at right now, we get a chance to stop them. And, and a key sequence in the game, 
was early in the third, and Georgia Tech was up by four, I believe, three or four, and we go for it on fourth and one and don't get it. That's a sudden change situation. Defense went out there um, on a short field, held them to a missed field goal, and that was a key component of the game because offense gets the ball next time and, and scores. So that was a big, t- uh, big moment in the game, and, and proud of those guys for for um, standing up and saying, you know what, we're we're good. We'll, 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 we got complimentary football. We keep talking about that. We got the offenses back. We'll go make it right. Can we talk about Keyshawn Smith for a moment? Because this, isn't he a great example of player development? Uh, you brought him in here late, kind of late in the recruiting process. Comes in. You guys worked him really hard in the spring, in the summer really try to tell him what he could be and now you're starting to see it. and that touchdown the goal line was great effort and great balance yeah i i agree with you i mean it's uh rob likens done a wonderful job with Keyshawn, um and it's easy to talk about rambo and, and harley you can't forget about harley harley's still making plays that touchdown was unbelievable mm-hmm. and he's done that a bunch this year and um but as more attention gets paid to those guys Keyshawn smith's on the other side and all of a sudden now he's got two back-to-back games with a touchdown and I don't think that's going to stop, you know. And now, which what you really want as a, as a, as an offense is is that you can attack a defense from all areas. There's not a side where they can say, well, we're not really worried about that guy. We're not even talking about Mallory down the middle. Mallory made a fantastic catch on the third down, and then we and then Jalen. So the fact that you can go um, really with all five eligible weapons and create a problem for the other side of the ball, I think, is why Tyler has a success because all he really has to do is just orchestrate it and get the ball to the open guy. Coach, you're, you're the perfect candidate to discuss short yardage because you have a defensive mindset, you're the head coach, you know what the offense does. Most of the time, when it's successful, it's because of proper execution. And if it's not successful, it's because of improper execution. It's normally a half a step or a half a person or a half a play that disrupts the whole sequence of what goes on in short yardage. That's right, and, and obviously we had three um, late in the game that we didn't um, succeed at. And so you come back and you unpack everything. You're going to look at the execution. Um, you're going to look at things like pad level. Um, you're going to look at you know, some schematic things. What were, what were we in? What were they in? Was, was there an extra guy? Um, you know, is the quarterback making the right read? Does he pull the ball? Because you know, mm-hmm. if they blitz the running back and there's no one left for the quarterback, he could pull it. Um, so all those things go in. And then you've got to be intentional on how to fix it. That's, that's a real life thing. I mean, you can't just say, well, you know, we just do this better. No, no, let's be intentional and let's understand that if we're in that situation, our confidence should be there because we know that we've put the work in that if we're in a fourth and one and, and we want to be aggressive and go for it, that we feel really good about our chances to get it. Because we were really good on fourth down and one a year ago. Um, obviously, Derek is a different element with that, but we even were successful early in this season on fourth down. We will continue to push the envelope and go for fourth downs. And, um, but we got to make sure that we execute uh, that, that backs up the call. Okay, it's Florida State week. We'll talk about the Florida State Seminoles, the Canes, and the Knowles at Doak Campbell Stadium. We will continue on the Manny Diaz Show right after this. If you train like a pro, then you should be treated like a pro. Much like the human body, our team of sports medicine experts moves as one to achieve a singular goal. your game. Hey, it's the Good Greek Spiro, and we all know that the most important part of winning a championship is getting there. And when the Miami Hurricanes need to get their equipment to each game, they call Good Greek Moving and Storage. The Miami Hurricanes trust the Good Greek, and so should you. So move like a champ and go to goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official movers of the Miami Hurricanes. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers, 